So the track here then splits into two. So it splits into a right and a left primary bronchus. So bronchi is plural and bronchus is singular. So I'll just remove one of the lungs so we can take a look at the, uh, the bronchi. So the place where the bronchus enters the lung is known as the hilum and at the hilum there's a there's a couple of other structures which enter the, the enter the lung so I've just brought the cardiovascular system in and I'm going to rotate the model around posteriorly and you can see the other structures that enter the lung so you've got the pulmonary veins and the pulmonary arteries which enter the lung at the hilum so I've just switched to this diagram which shows the exact same view we're looking at we're looking at the um, a posterior view so you can see the trachea coming down here branching off into the left and right main bronchi and you can see the pulmonary arteries um, at the top and the pulmonary veins inferiorly entering into the lung at the hilum so you've got the pulmonary arteries in blue carrying deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs to receive oxygen and you've got the pulmonary veins uh, returning oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. So this diagram here just shows the hilum in a bit more detail. So you can see the uh, structures entering this area called the hilum of the lung. So just coming back to the, uh, the bronchi, uh, once they've entered the lung they divide further. So they divide into lobar bronchi which are also known as secondary bronchi and then the lobar bronchi divide further into segmental bronchi so you've got the trachea dividing into the primary bronchus so you've got a right and left primary bronchus or main bronchus then the the primary bronchi divide into lobar bronchi which are known as secondary bronchi and the secondary bronchi divide into tertiary bronchi which are segmental bronchi so the the bronchi just keep dividing and they end up in bronchioles which are smaller and lack cartilage um, and then these bronchioles eventually uh, form alveolar ducts which lead to alveolar sacs and form alveoli which are responsible for gaseous exchange and they have a huge surface area for diffusion they have a rich blood supply and are very thin but we'll talk about that in another tutorial. So for now just remember that the trachea divides into the right and left main bronchi which divide into secondary bronchi which divide into tertiary bronchi. So the secondary bronchi are, um, are called lobar bronchi because they supply the, the lobes of the lung with air. So the right lung which is this lung here has three lobes. You've got a superior lobe a middle lobe and an inferior lobe and these lobes are uh, separated by fissures so on the right lung you've got a fissure which separates the superior and middle lobes and this is called the horizontal fissure and you've also got an oblique fissure because it runs obliquely and this separates the middle from the inferior lobes and also the superior and inferior lobe at the back on the other side the right lung um, only has one fissure, so it's only got an oblique fissure which separates a superior and inferior lobe. So now that we know um, how many lobes there are in each lung, we know how many lobar bronchi there must be. Um, so there's only three right lobar bronchi and there are only two left lobar bronchi because there's three lobes on the right and two lobes on the left. So these lobes are, can actually be further divided into what is known as bronchopulmonary segments and each, each lung has 10 bronchopulmonary segments and these bronchopulmonary segments are supplied by the segmental bronchi, so the tertiary bronchi. So the lobar bronchi supply the lobes of the lungs and the segmental bronchi supply the bronchopulmonary segments. So you can see in this diagram the three lobar bronchi on the right 
and the two lobar bronchi on the left. So you can see them in different colours. You've got the superior in green, uh, yellow, you've got the middle lobar bronchus, and in blue you've got the inferior lobar bronchus. And you've got the superior and inferior lobar bronchus in green and blue on the on the left side. So the lungs themselves are surrounded by a pleural cavity and you can see see the cavity here in pink. So the, the pleura or the pleural cavities are uh, serous membranes which line the lungs and uh, there's a visceral pleura and a parietal pleura. So the visceral pleura lies very closely to the lung and adheres closely to the lung tissue and the parietal pleura lines the thorax and both these pleural layers are continuous at the hilum. So between the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura is the pleural cavity and this contains pleural fluid. So this space between the visceral and the parietal pleura is only a potential space so in, in normality these layers lie in very close contact and you've got this thin layer of pleural fluid. So I've just switched over to this cross section um, of the of the lungs, so you can see um, so anteriorly up here, posteriorly down here, and you've got the left lung and the right lung, and we'll just take a look at the so you can see the the pleura in this diagram. So you can see at the hilum, um, these two layers are continuous. So you've got the outer layer, which is the parietal pleura, which lines the thorax, and then um, the visceral pleura lies very closely to the lung and it goes into the fissures and everything like that and then it is continuous with the parietal pleura at the hilum so this area remember where all these structures enter the bronchus um, the bronchi the pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins entering at the hilum so you can see how the visceral and parietal pleura are continuous with one another and then you've got this um, this space between the two layers which is the pleural cavity which contains pleural fluid. So that's um, a very basic and broad overview of some of the, the, the structures in the respiratory system.